Magic is a trading card game, right? It's still a, a TCG. Trading is in the uh, first word in the description. But is it still a trading card game? Is it still is trading still viable? Still active and lively where you are, whomever you are, <laughs> whatever you're doing. Uh, one of the aspects of the game that I loved when I first started playing is uh, is trading. I would have cards on binder and I would just trade to trade. I just wanted uh, velocity. Uh, of course, there were always cards I was looking for, cards that I wanted for my own decks, cards that I just enjoyed. But then I also like to have cards in the binder just to someone say, hey, I want this. They would have nothing I want, and I would just, okay, well, this is kind of equal. Let's just trade, just to move cards around, get new things. Um, and I just like the wheeling and dealing of it. And then when I came here to Europe, when I came to, to Czech Republic, it seemed that trading was too mercantile, too uh, niggling on the finer, uh, finer points. Everything had to be exact down to the crown. And I got, and people didn't want to trade to trade. If you didn't have anything that they wanted, but you had something, they had something you wanted, they would not trade it just for something else of equal value, even maybe a little bit higher in your binder, unless they are really coming out ahead. And that, uh, that just turned me off. But yesterday I was, I went down to my LGS <clears throat> to uh, pick them in order. So most of the trading I've been doing over the past few years has been buy list trading, where I register cards I have um, on my LGS's uh, buy list site, take them in, and uh, pick them an order of cards that I want. So, uh, trading with the LDGS, basically buy listings for, for store credit. Not really trading though, because there's no wheeling and dealing, there's no discussion in the exchanges. Hey, here's my cards. Okay, here's your cards. All right, cheers. Nascadano. And uh, in MKM, in Magic Card Market, it's the same. So, I would list a card for sale, somebody would buy it. I would use the Magic Card Market credit, Magic Card Market money, and buy other cards I wanted. So there's no interpersonal connection. There's no discussion. There's no seeing what else the person has in their binder on the spot that you might want. Yeah, you can look at their offerings. You can see what else they're selling. Um, but it's not flipping through a binder. It's not actually seeing the physical cards. So yesterday, like I said, I went down to uh, pick up uh, a buy list order. So I traded to my LGS two overgrown tombs from the third Ravnica set. I forget what it's called. I mean, we're going to have a fourth Ravnica set pretty soon. And uh, a Noble Hierarch, and I got Drown and Lavella. And I'm, I'm surprised at the power creep. So this is Linvala, costs four. Two colorless, two white, for a 3-4 flyer. Activated abilities of creatures your opponent's control can't, can't be activated. So they dropped one colorless, moved it to black. So now it's one, two white, two black. It still has Linvala's ability, but now it also has all activated abilities of all creatures your opponent's control. And I can spend mana as any way I want. Tag... And it's the same creature, basically. They just tacked on extra ability. Power creep is... Uh, it's going to be the, the death of the game, I think. It's just going to make it too fast. Um, not only in the game, but also in valuation. If everything is going to be obsoleted, how are old cards supposed to retain value? Except reserve list. So anyway, I got Dranalyn Vala, and this is going into Edgar. Um... Not exactly sure what I'm taking out, but if I've got a couple minutes of the video, I'll make that change. I got this uh, Markov Baron. I have the alternate art already in uh, Edgar Markov. I'm not sure if I like this one or that one better. I think I like this one better, so when I look at them side by side, I'll make that definitive determination. Some of you might have... Um, watched my video where I explain why Karthus no longer works. And I gave up on the idea. Not completely, I gave up on the idea of Karthus being the commander. 
So what I've decided to do is take the elf package from Karthus and turn it over to Chulane, tell her tales once I get a Chulane. And Karthus himself spent some time thinking, okay, what do I want to do with him? What direction do I want to go? And I'm going to try direct damage. I have a Kamal, the Barbarian, Jessica Warrior Adept. Um, I have a uh, Joira, the... Uh, the the actual legend card, not the Plants of Arcajora. And I'm going to put them into the deck and just try to do direct damage to things, see if it works. With a bit of black for the recursion, a bit of green for the ramp. So I picked this up, got this from it, and again, surprised how cheap this is. Um, 100, uh, 115 crowns, so about 6, maybe 7 euro to get this card. Beautiful alternate art foil. Jeez, prices are just low. I'm not sure where this is going. Um, I just saw that it was printed and I saw that they had the alternate uh, frame, the retro frame. So I thought I'll get one. Maybe I'll put it into uh, Animar if I redo his uh, Hydra alternate build. My Animar has two builds. The current one is Ildrazi Surprise Motherfucker and Morph Cards. And then I've got uh, 40 cards set aside that are Hydras, uh, things that deal with uh, plus and plus counters, Ion, Storm, double uh, Doubling Season, that sort of thing. And this will go into that pile for when, if ever, I get tired of playing Surprise Motherfucker, I can uh, switch over to Hydras. Also, got these Path of Ancestries. So, a lot of my Path of Ancestries are the same art. Um, when I started putting them into cards, into decks, when I started putting them into decks, I was, that was the art that was available. So I decided, because I like all my commander decks to have their own feel, to get uh, at least the alternate frame and then the alternate art. That one is interesting. I'm not sure where these are going, but I'll be switching out the pass in a couple of my commander decks in order to work these in. And then I got this Death Denied foil. Um, again, this is all part of the buy list uh, transaction from LGS. This, this card surprised me, uh, how much I like it. Basically what happened is, working with Karthus, I was holding um, Patriarch's Bidding and realized I didn't want to cast it. If I cast it, I just get the dead creatures back. I need to get them in my hand so I can start casting them again in order to um, get the draw engine going, to have all the effects that whenever you cast a creature, whenever you cast an elf, draw a card. Well, if I just put them in play, I don't get any of that, so I don't advance my position. I just return to my previous state of being. But death denied, if I spend the same mana as I would for uh, Patriarch's Bidding, I get three elves back, so that's three creatures I can cast to start the draw engine going again. Well, broke up Karthus. Uh, Chulain doesn't have black, so he can't have death denied, but somebody will get it. I will put this in the deck somewhere. Yes, this is, this is all. All these cards, all these cards are still what I got for two overgrown tombs and one noble hierarch. I am, these were only seven crowns. These were less than um, 10 euro cents. Wow, I, the art is amazing. Um, I really like it. It's just cute, whimsical. It's going to be funny in some of my more hardcore decks to pop this in play. But I, I had to get one for my daughter. Um, she saw the art, and I knew she'd want it to... <laughs> so I, I got her one, too. She's going to put it in her art binder. And then I got this crawl space. And you can see this is already in sleeves, so this is going in a deck. Uh, no more to two creatures can attack you each time. Wow, there's a lot of glare off that. Can I get it so you don't have to see my ugly face? Or Take out of the sleeve, Jesus Christ. There we go. That's a little bit better. So, Crawl Space. No more than two creatures can attack you each combat. The original Urza's, uh, I believe Urza's Legacy Crawl Space, it's a thousand crowns. It's a... Uh, 30 euro. This one, two. <laughs> I 
So as much as I was I would love to have the original uh, Ursa's version, well, I, I, I can't deny that I want to finish that I quickly, and uh, spending two euros now is uh, is a lot more viable. So there's crawl space, sort of hearth and home. This is going in the same deck, and something I like about this, something interesting about this, is whenever the creature deals damage to a player, exile one target creature you own. There's a lot of these effects that only hit creatures you control. But this one, if somebody steals one of my creatures, I can exile it and bring it back under my control. I can send a creature equipped with Sword of Farth and Home to rescue a creature that an opponent has uh, stolen temporarily. And again, all that, all this, was two Overgrown Tombs from the third Ravnica set, the cheapest ones, and one Noble Hierarch as, as well, okay. So, <clears throat> got a lot of cards for different decks. And then, uh, in the I got these. I got these for the art. I just love that uh, that art there. It, it's just, it kind of makes me happy to see it. It's just calming and peaceful. Yeah, th okay, there's a sunken ship, which wasn't peaceful when it was going down, but it's peaceful now. It's at rest. Then I got this guy for the art, too. I just, I like the action, I like the color, I like the fear on the guys in the background going, holy shit, he's getting his ass beat. Now, as I was saying, so, um, trading to trade, and trading in the, uh, in person. I took my trade binder with me, it's a small one, it's this little trade book, there's not a whole lot of uh, good cards in it. And uh, just, Decided to see if the scene is uh, is any better than it used to be. So I went back to the tables, went back to everybody's playing, and looked at uh, one of the lads that had his binder sitting next to him when he's playing game, and uh, asked if he spoke English, and he said yes. And I, Do you have cards for trade? And he said yes, and he offered uh, me to go through his binder while he's finishing his game. And then when he looked through my binder, he wanted my Zendikar Rising Expedition Foil Flooded Strand. And I'm looking through his binder, and he had quite a few things I wanted. What I eventually settled on was Weathered Wayfarer. This is going into uh, Frodo and Sam. It cannot go into any of my regular commander decks because it's uh, from Lord of the Rings. I maintain a split between my two Lord of the Rings decks and my regular commander decks. I don't want to mix them. I just, I don't, it's completely arbitrary and it makes no real sense, but it's just the way I want to do things to maintain the feel, the separation of this is a Lord of the Rings deck. These are my commander decks. This is what I have built. So Weathered Wafer will be going into Ferdo and Sam. Not sure what I am going to take out. Maybe one of the four board wipes. Having four board wipes is probably one too many when you're having a creature strategy and you don't have a lot of ways of getting all your creatures back. And then he had Minas Tirith. This is a throw in. So I traded him the Zendikar Rising Expeditions Foil Flooded Strand and a Dark Ashes to Ashes which was in thrash condition and uh, something else I didn't care about for and I had him throw in Minas Tirith. This is also going into Ferdinand. It's pretty easy. I take out a plane, so I put this in. Um, it's full of legendary creatures, so that'll come into play and tapped. And then I got these Tide Binders. These are kind of expensive. I should have them in my Mervo deck. He didn't have a full playset, though. And without a full playset, and with me not really wanting to buy them for my modern Burfolk deck, because I don't play in modern tournaments, so I don't need the deck at the cutting edge of the meta. I don't. It'd be nice to have it, but that would really uh, start to overshadow my other closed environment modern decks. And I've got a series on that. You can uh, look at my videos for 
my modern ecosystem, my closed modern decks. So, uh, Tulane will be getting a tight binder. Um, probably Edric will be getting a tide binder. I'm not sure who else, but I've got three of them. So I've got three decks that are getting tide binders. One of them is spoken for, the other two are wide open. Yeah, so this, this is dirt cheap too. Uh, this beautiful foil retro frame Temple of the False God. If you get the uh, original Legion's Temple of the False God in foil, oh, it's going to set you back. It ain't cheap. Okay, so this has this, I don't like the, uh, the color of the symbol. I don't like it. I prefer the number in a circle. I much prefer that visually. And the number, okay, fine. It's just some extra crap on the card. But uh, I do like that it's foil and retro frame. And it's, my god, it's worth nothing. This is another card that isn't really worth anything. Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. Uh, in this treatment? So I've got a full art foil Vito I bought early. Um, I got it when it was still pretty low. And I wanted, to, that's an Edgar. I wanted another Vito to put into Ikrishidiki Sidar Kondo because I wanted to double up the um, Sanguine Bond effects. So he would be a second Sanguine Bond and he fits their theme perfectly. His toughness is higher than his power. He does something when uh, my opponents gain life. I'm sorry, when I gain life. He gives my creatures life link. Uh, it's just perfect for. Uh, he does everything the deck wants to do. So I don't know what I'm going to take out, but I will take out something and put him in. Ristic Study. I would prefer the anime art, but he had this. It, this is a uh, 30 euro. So the Tide Binders were uh, 13 each. So that's 42. This is 30. So that's 72. So that's right up with the... We valued the uh, Syndicar Rising Expeditions Foil Flooded Strand at 80 euro. So this is 30 minus 50. Tide Binders 42, so I left 8. Um, I've got two decks with Rhystic Studies. I've got seven decks with blue. I've got two that I'm building with blue. So I've got plenty of places to put this. I just am not sure where I'm going to put it. And what's funny is you notice my binder. You already have a Rhystic Study. Yeah, but it's the old Prophecy Rhystic Study. I have two with that art. I have the foil uh, Commander's Arsenal, and I've got this flat one, this non-foil one. So I want something with different art. He said, yeah, that makes sense. So I got that. And then, somebody else, noticing this, wanted to poke through my binder. And uh, he wanted my thrashed Vengeful Dreams. Non-foil, just beat to hell. And looking through his binder, it was worth nothing. It was worth 20 crowns, a dollar, a euro, not even a euro. And he had this. And I'm looking at this. And how much is this worth? He said, yeah, pretty much nothing. Okay, am I, am I missing something? It costs two. Power and toughness are each equal to the number of non-land permanents you control. If I have four creatures, he's a 5-5. Five five because he would count himself. Uh, turn three, turn five in a regular commander game, I uh, usually have two or three permanents out by turn three. So he would be a 3-3 three, three quickly. Uh, turn six, seven, sometimes I can have eight permanents out, non-land. He would be an 8-8. Eight, eight. How, how is he so cheap? What am I missing? What am I not seeing? Is it just because having a big beater? Having so, is that why... I know why nobody plays Tarmogoyf, because he doesn't have any evasion. He doesn't really do anything. Is that the same with this? Is that where we are with Power Creep? Where a creature for two mana that can potentially be a 6-6, six, six, a 8-8, eight, eight, relatively early in the game, is worth nothing? That's, uh... I, that kind of kind of makes me uh, worry about the future of the game. 
But anyway, my daughter wanted him to. She thought a rabbit unicorn is, is hilarious. But I'll put him in something. Maybe I'll put him in Chew Lane because it's just funny. <laughs> I attack you with my rabbit unicorn. For yeah, how big is he? He's a ten ten. Holy crap, that's a big rabbit unicorn. Yes. You must find your holy hand grenade if you wish to defeat him. Okay, that's it. Cheers.